Hey guys, it's Lemming Rush. Today we're going to be taking a look at Aki Evelyn's carry in his T95 on Arctic regions. So, uh, people have asked me to commentate on this replay. I'm not really sure why. To me, it was just an exemplary per performance of TD play. And uh, clearly, this guy has seen my TD guide. So, to start off the game, he's in his T95. He wants to take C7, roughly speaking. Uh, and you're going to notice the idiot Malshand who wants to go south on this map like a complete retard. Uh, got in his way and you know that's just how the spawn was or whatever but um you know clearly this guy's seen my uh my td guide he starts off the game by facilitating team play in the chat right there and calls the motion a retard so brilliant beginning and then he proceeds to call him a wanker now <laughs> this guy's in his t95 he's in a top tier you know probably one of the most armored tanks in the game and what he's gonna do is he's gonna decide to go to c8 now <sighs> I don't know what to say about this because to me what he's doing is he's taking a tank that is completely capable of winning you know one side of the map at the very least given the circumstances like he's top tier there's no already they don't really have anything that can pen him you know the oho can he him or the type 4 heavy can he him but like really what he's doing is he's camping in in a top tier uh in this situation i would call it a heavy tank because it kind of has to play like one so that's you know, he's seen my, <laughs> he's quite obviously seen my TD guide and taken it to heart. And so what he's going to do is he's going to sit here for a good couple of minutes. Now, you'll notice some of these blind sh shots that he takes. I, in my opinion, they're actually really good. So I'm not going to, you know, talk, well, they were very good blind shots as far as I was concerned. He shoots at someone who shot at him. He then gets lit. He tries to blind fire the bushes where a scout could be in. As far as I'm concerned, that's exactly what uh, a TD in this location should be doing. But you'll notice, like... What, what's going to happen is based on his position, he's unable to help his team. So if you take a look at the map, the Maoshan's deciding to fall back. That's this guy right here. This is the correct place. So if you're in Arctic region and you're in the Maoshan or, or, you know, whatever heavy and you've decided you're not going to beat a type four, what the Maoshan is doing is exactly right. He's basically bringing all these players who would be shooting at him otherwise into the gun of all the moronic campers who are still sitting in base, despite the fact that it's four minutes in. So the Maoshan's making a great play, falling back, asking his teammates to fall back. That's good as far as I'm concerned. What you'll notice, though, is like <laughs> there's two flanks here. Uh, and neither of them needed to be lost, in my opinion. Like he could have gone to one, and, you know, that's going to be what's going to work nine times out of ten. But in this case, he's going to get uh, extraordinary luck, extraordinarily lucky. And, uh, you know, you'll see that as that progresses. So the situation that's given to him right now is there's three tanks pushing in through the north. They've also got all their tanks pushing through the south. The enemy has 11 tanks left. The Maoshin is getting mad at the T95. Now, what's going to happen here is that, I, as far as I'm concerned, this Maoshin probably realizes that these guys are going to push in, right? Because they're going to come onto the cap. But that's a problem for him, right? Because this Maoshin is going to get flanked by a T34, a Tiger, and a T54. And so he can't have that. So what does the T95 decide to do? Well, he decides to continue to sit exactly where he is, and he gets to farm this Type 5 Heavy. He kills the Centurion 1, which was a high roll. Uh, and, you know, it's it's going to... How do I say it? This position on this map is a bit broken, because basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to funnel the enemy into one, one thing. But what you're going to notice is, like, this T95 is shooting at nothing. And despite the fact that, you know... His Maoshin's getting farmed in the side by a tiger. He's literally just going to sit here and focus a challenger who, you know, in the grand scheme of things, these tanks aren't threats to the Maoshin, considering what is shooting at him, right? Like the Type 4 matters, etc., etc. The biggest thing for him to worry about would be this tiger. But he doesn't even, like, the tiger's here, not even looking at him, and he sits here. So that's you know, that's that's a problem as far as I'm concerned. What he's doing is he's letting his Maoshin die. Now, if you want epic games and you want to get into situations like this, letting your teammates die is exactly what you need to do because, you know, if your teammates do well, how are you going to get high damage games? So, you know, it depends on your perspective, but that's, that's kind of my opinion. Now, a couple things are going to happen here and you're going to notice that I would say, you know, this is a one in a thousand type of experience. He's in this situation where because he's given up positions, he's last alive. So he's basically let his entire team die and now he's last alive. Now, if you're last alive, this position is a good one, right? That's that's the honest answer. If, if you're last alive, what this position allows you to do is it lets, it lets you, 
you know, f force the enemies to come into you from one location. That's kind of why this position's a bit broken. But, you know, there's no RD also, which is absolutely fantastic. But basically what's going to happen is like, they're going to push into him one by one. Like this T-44-54 can't even flank. I don't know what to say. It's like... The fact that he's going to come out of this situation successfully is not a testament to his skill or prowess in the T95. It's more of a testament to how bad these enemies are. Like, they're choosing to fight... <laughs> like, let me put it this way. This this T95 just shot, so what does the T54 do? He decides not to try to flank him, right? And he's now tracked. The T454 could drive in front and flank him. And now the T34 is pushing forwards, and the T54 could start to... I don't know, make a play right here instead of just sitting in the open and letting the T the, the 95 kill him. And so that happens. Now this T-34 is trying to flank this T-95, which is good for him. But you'll notice, like, no one else is pushing up. So this is another lucky situation. Now, if I was in this situation in a 750 alpha tank, you know, most of the time you would be screwed here because this T-34 is a two-shot if you roll average. But you'll notice he manages to get the high roll right here, and that's you know, high rules are this guy's specialty, I suppose. No, it's like, that's just a lucky aspect to this game. So he's in this strong position, but, uh, but the thing is all the enemy is really, really bad. And uh, I think he, does he low roll here? Yeah, he low rolls. So it kind of goes both ways. But the thing is he needed to high roll the T-34. He could totally afford to low roll that T-29. So whatever. So he's in this situation where there's a ton of one shots who are coming at him from a a position where they have to fight him in the front. Now, the correct thing to do, and this is what exactly what I thought during the, the replay would be to cap out, right? So, obviously, they've got a tank unspotted, the STRV or whatever, and they also have another STRV unspotted. Why don't those two players just get on cap right now? That would be the logical thing to do. I would think that's what most people would do after seeing, like, I don't know, six well there's three tanks here and the rest are like one shot so it's it doesn't look promising from the enemy's perspective so and there's another tank dead so basically the correct thing to do in this situation if you were the enemy would be to cap out now the strv does that he crosses while the t95 is reloading which is perfect as far as i'm concerned and it's like the type 5 is shooting ap at a t90 <laughs> that's unreal like no one shoots ap out of a type type 5 <laughs> especially out of t95 and so you know this type 5 quite quite clearly isn't a very skilled player or whatever and uh you know he drives into a loaded t95 while they're capping out now there's a couple things i want to mention here so there's two people on cap that's the right play the way they cap out is bad and so it's in a sense it's going to be lucky for uh the t95 i think the best thing and the strv is shooting he like why i i he shot HE the first time, and then he continued to shoot HP, HE while he was shooting at the side of a 95. I don't get it, but, you know, that's what it is. So, the T95 is going to make a correct play right here. You'll notice the Indian Panzer fell back on cap. They they just should have sat here on cap the entire time, so they didn't let themselves get reset. But the Indian Panzer drove forwards, got himself reset, and now it's like he's a one-shot, so he can't flank the T95 anymore. Um... And the T95's only option is to push into him. So he's going to make a play here. It's the right play. That's the thing. So this is not a bad thing. So he shoots at the STRV S1, which is fine. Um, but you'll notice the Indian Panzer... Like, doesn't... I don't know what to say. Like, he doesn't do anything in response to the fact that the T95 is reloading and there's cover somewhat in front of him. Like, he doesn't try to flank the T95. He doesn't even shoot at the T95's tracks, you know. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's lucky that the Indian Panzer didn't drive in this direction and turn, you know, this guy's rear towards these guys. Now, a couple of things you'll notice here. Again, it's like another bad play by the enemy is... That, that normally wouldn't happen, right? Like, this is just complete luck that these guys are making this play. They aren't pushing into the rear of the T95, right? Like, the T95 has given this them, them this opportunity to flank him permanently and just get directly behind him, but that's not what they do. They decide to just kind of sit here and bounce... <laughs> bounce the rear of the Tiger and the T25, and so it's like, okay, well good 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 armor angling right like no it's just the he didn't play he made a really good play to reset but the fact that he's still alive is not through his skill it's through his luck so 
shoots at the T25. The T25, despite being a relatively mobile TD, does not try to flank the T95. So there's that. He is trying to track him, which is fair. Um, but, you know, he's trying to reverse faster than a T95 can drive forwards, which happens. So that's his ninth kill. Um, in this situation, he makes an interesting play, if I recall. He expects the Tiger to be flanking him, which is correct. But you'll notice this STRV, you know, despite the fact that he's alone, the Tiger's probably flanking, you know, the Tiger's probably right here right now. The STRV pushes into this guy at the... <laughs> Jesus. How, how do you... How do I get enemies like this, you know? Basically what happens is this STRV could have been sitting here farming thing, everything as it happened, right? Like that would have been the obvious uh, position even to some sort of average player. Instead, what he decides to do is he decides to wait until his T25 slash two is dead. And only once he's dead, does he decide to try flanking this T95, which is like, okay. So he just got shot. He doesn't try to, tr like, track or out position or anything, this T95. He just kind of sits there, puts a shot, which pens, which is, you know, he shoots the lower plate or something with gold, so it pens. And then he just kind of sits in front of Aki Evil in here, and it's like, yeah, good. <laughs> like, the, the STRV, one of the most mobile TDs in the game, sat in front of a T95 and didn't try to press w or d or anything so you know that's that's going to happen consistently uh and then this c95 makes a really in my opinion decent call expecting this tiger tiger one to flank him you know well <laughs> here's how i see it he it could have been a good call like logically the tiger one would be flanking him at least in my opinion that's that's a decent thing to expl expect now i don't know if the t95 was thinking that or if he just wanted to return to his camping position over here so he could continue to farm people as as they just try to drive through here, you know, into this position or whatever. So I don't know if he did that on purpose, but if you're in a situation like this and someone goes dark, you can kind of expect them to be trying to flank you. And so this, this play kind of works out now, you know, it's a tiger <laughs> and watch how the tiger handles this. So the tiger's really got nothing to do in this point. The tiger gets lucky that the T95 low rolls him, which is fine, but you'll notice the the fact that the T95 is reloading and the Tiger doesn't really try to make, like, I don't know, five seconds late he tries to make a play and then he tries to reverse again faster than the T95 can move forward. So the T95 gets the kill and all that, but it's like, um, I don't know. I, I, I understand 9,700 damage, you know, clearly he's a great, I'm sure he does this type of thing consistently. It's like, no, this is, this is the one in, you know, the 9,700 damage is one in... I don't know, 10,000 for most players, maybe one in 20,000 for most players. Um, and the way he got it would not facilitate winning on a regular basis because what he did is like, <laughs> the play he made worked out, but it, it worked out because the enemy was A, uh, terrible. And then I would say that's actually the only reason. And then he had a really strong position, right? That that works when the enemy is terrible. So um yeah, that's like, if you sit here, you can do really great things from there, especially when there's no arty, but it's like, normally they're not going to send however many enemy tanks they did to like, try to get through you, you know, to do that. So, um, I would say that if you're in a T95 on this map, what you're going to find is that you're going to win way more by like trying to win a position instead of letting all your team die and then trying to win an 11 V one or whatever the hell it, it was a nine V one or something, you know, like that's going to be way more consistent. So I would not suggest playing like this T95 did. I would think he would have been a lot better suited to go to the South and like helping his teammates. So they didn't just die so he could get more damage. But, uh, you know, if you're going for Epic games, by all means, just bait your teammates until they die, because that's going to be how you do that. Right. Cause otherwise they'll steal your damage and stuff. So I don't like showing videos replays like this on my channel because it's like he did nothing that is going to work for you, you know? So my question is how, how, like, why even <laughs> the reason people wanted me to show this is because it's bad play. So that's take it for what it is. It's, it's not conducive to actually winning games and it's not going to do that consistently. Um, I would also suggest not calling your teammates retard right at the beginning of the game, uh, simply because like I said in my TD guide, that doesn't, 
like jesus christ it's so stupid it shouldn't have to be explained so um you know his team didn't do well he did well he carried the team there but it's like i would never suggest doing this on a consistent basis what i would suggest doing is if you're in a tank with some mobility play kind of like the Martian did it's like go to the south or whatever flank you decide is relevant play that side and then if you're going to run away and defend the base do it from where the t95 did but playing there right at the beginning when you're a top tier armored you know tank with 750 alpha and 276 ap pen like that's going to lose you more games than it is going to win you games so that's that's my opinion on that i hope this video was uh, interesting to watch if you want to see more be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button and i hope to see you around later guys Bye bye